Very good evening and welcome to our evening prayer on this Monday, the 9th of August 2021. Today we commemorate Mary Sumner, who is founder of the Mother's Union. Mary Elizabeth Sumner, named Haywood, was born in 1828 at Swinton. In 1848, she married a young curate, George Henry Sumner, nephew of Archbishop Sumner, who was himself to become Bishop of Guildford in 1888. A mother of three children, Mary called a meeting in 1876 at which the Mothers' Union was founded, providing a forum in which to unite mothers of all classes in the aim of bringing up children in the Christian faith. Baptism and parental example were its two basic principles. At first a parochial organisation, it grew steadily into an international concern, encouraging the ideal of a Christian home. Mary died on this day in the year 1921. Our evening prayer begins, as always, with our prayers of preparation. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night, you be praised and glory for ever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The name I've chosen for this evening is Father, hear the prayer we offer. Father, hear the prayer we offer, not for ease that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously. Not forever in green pastures do we ask our way to be, but the steep and rugged pathway may we tread rejoicingly. Not forever by still waters would we idly rest and stay, but would smite the living fountains from the rocks along our way. Be our strength in hours of weakness, in our wanderings be our guide, through endeavour, failure, danger, other be thou at our side. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us, cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and for ever. Amen. First psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 72. Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the son of a king. Then shall he judge your peoples righteously and your poor with justice. May the mountains bring forth peace and the little hills righteousness for the people. May he defend the poor among the people, deliver the children of the needy and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. May he come down like rain upon the mown grass, like the showers that water the earth. In his time shall righteousness flourish and abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. May his dominion extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes kneel before him and his enemies lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the Isle shall pay tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring gifts. All kings shall fall down before him and all nations shall do him service. For he shall deliver the poor that cry out, the needy and those that have no helper. He shall have pity on the weak and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence. And dear shall their blood be in his sight. Long may he live, and to him may be given gold from Sheba. May prayer be made for him continually, and may they bless him all the day long. May there be abundance of grain on the earth, standing thick upon the hilltops. May its fruit flourish like Lebanon, and its grain grow like the grass of the field. 
May his name remain for ever and be established as long as the sun endures. May all nations be blessed in him and call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name for ever. May the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. Psalm 75. We give you thanks, O God, we give you thanks, for your name is near, as your wonderful deeds declare. I will seize the appointed time. I, the Lord, will judge with equity. Though the earth reels and all that dwell in her, it is I that hold her pillar steady. To the boasters I say, boast no longer. To the wicked, do not lift up your horn. Do not lift up your horn on high. Do not speak with a stiff neck. For neither from the east nor from the west, nor yet from the wilderness comes exaltation, but God alone is judge. He puts down one and raises up another, for in the hand of the Lord there is a cup well mixed and full of foaming wine. He pours it out for all the wicked of the earth. They shall drink it and drain the dregs. But I will rejoice for ever and make music to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked will I break but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And a reading from the first letter of Samuel, chapter 24. When Saul returned from following the Philistines, he was told, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to look for David and his men in the direction of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds beside the road. There, there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave. The men of David said to him, Here is the day in which the Lord said to you, I will give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do with him as it seems good to you. And David went and stealthily cut a corner of Saul's cloak. Afterwards, David was stricken to the heart because he had cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to raise my hand against him, for he is the Lord's anointed. So David scolded his men severely and did not permit them to attack Saul. Then Saul got up and left the cave and went on his way. Afterwards, David also rose up and went out of the cave and called after Saul, My lord, the king! When Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. Saul, David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of those who say David seeks to do you harm? This very day your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you into my hand in the cave, and some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said... I will not raise my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your cloak in my hand, for by the fact that I cut off the corner of your cloak and did not kill you, you may know for certain that there is no wrong or treason in my hands. I have not sinned against you, though you are hunting me to take my life. May the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the ancient proverb says, out of wickedness comes forth wicked, but my hand shall not be against you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A single flea? May the Lord therefore be judge and give sentence between me and you. May he see to it and please my court and vindicate me against you. When David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul, Saul said, Is that your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you evil. Today you have explained how you have dealt well with me, in that you did not kill me when the Lord put me into your hands. For who has ever found an enemy and sent the enemy safely away? So may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. 
Now I know that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Spare to me, therefore, by the Lord, that you will not cut off my descendants after me, and that you will not wipe out my name from my father's house. So David swore this to Saul. Then Saul went home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. Here ends the first reading. And the canticle, the song of God's grace. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us for adoption as your children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will, to the praise of your glorious grace, which you freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In you we have redemption through the blood of Christ, the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of your grace, which you have lavished upon us. You have made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of your will, according to your purpose which you set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. And our second reading from Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse 11. The lame man who was healed clung to Peter and John, and all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's portico, utterly astonished. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is, Jesus, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you from your own people a prophet like me. You must listen to whatever he tells you, and it will be that any, everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be utterly rooted out from the people. And all the prophets, as many as have spoken from Samuel and those after him, also predicted these days. You are the ancestors of the prophets and of the covenant that God gave to your ancestors, saying to Abraham, and in your descendants all the families of the earth shall be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. <coughs> Here ends the second reading. And our responsory. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. And the Magnificat. In the heavenly kingdom the blessed will have their dwelling place and their rest for ever and ever. 
My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. In the heavenly kingdom, the blessed will have their dwelling place and their rest for ever and ever. And so we come now to our prayers of intercession. As we rem remember Mary Sumner, we remember the Mother's Union throughout the world, particularly the Mother's Union in this church. We pray also for the Diocese of Duke in the Episcopal Church of South Sudan and the province of Jongle. We continue to pray for the Peneda and Tanat Vernui mission areas, praying for their leadership and praying especially for the children and youths work at Llandrichlo, giving thanks for Club Trichlo, the youth club in the village, giving thanks that new people are coming forward to lead these and pray that they will continue to flourish. And so we pray, as always, for the Church, for Gregory, our Bishop, and for all those who follow in the way of Christ. We pray for God's grace. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. Lord God, through your grace we are your people. Through your Son you have redeemed us. In your Spirit you have made us your own. And so we pray for your church. Make our hearts respond to your love. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. We pray for the world around us, praying for those who make difficult decisions that affect the lives of others, praying for all those developing, producing and rolling out the vaccine. May our lives bear witness to your glory in the world. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick or in any kind of need, remembering especially Richard, Louise, Derek, Gordon, Anne, Nancy, Harry, Dot, Chris, Peter, Joshua, Janet, Joe, Bob, Tessa, Alison, Mavanwi and Josie. We pray for those who are bereaved, especially Pearl and her family. May our wills, make our wills eager to obey and our hands ready to heal. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the life and example of the saints. We pray especially, we give thanks especially for the life and example of Mary Sumner, whom we commemorate today. And we also remember those whom we have loved and lost, those whose anniversaries fall around this time and also those who have departed recently, particularly Sue Pinnington Priest, Barbara and Iris, who was laid to rest today. Make our voices one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. And so our collect. Faithful and loving God, who called Mary Sumner to strive for the renewal of family life, Give us the gift of your Holy Spirit that through word and prayer and deed your family may be strengthened and your people served. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.
Amen. Thank you very much for joining me this evening once again. Thank you.